Hey everybody, Russ Gray with Keller Williams Advantage in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Coming to you today with the monthly market report. I do apologize, I missed July's report. Um, I didn't get it out in time. I reviewed the numbers, I did see a lot of really interesting things and um, some statistics that we should uh, probably look into and de uh, decompact a little bit just to kind of understand a little more what's going on at the market. Um, it kind of tells us a little more about what's kind of happening in August. And we're going to explain, I'm going to go ahead and explain um, kind of what's going on with the numbers in August and why they look a certain way. So, um, for a high level overview of July, um, July's numbers look pretty solid. Our month supply of inventory is at 2.02, which was up a little bit more from uh, June's numbers, which is good. Um, month supply of inventory, or uh, end of month inventory, obviously down by about 50% from the year before that. Uh, average list price is around 250. Average sales price is two, uh, 248, uh, 249 we'll call it. Uh, closed listings, pending listings, new listings. It's starting to get a little bit better for the pending and the new listing side. Closed listings are starting to kind of dwindle down. We're starting to dwindle down a little bit in July. Um, August, we're up a little bit more. And I'll explain why I think that is and kind of why we're starting to see a little bit of a shift in regards to the market. Um, not a shift. Um, that's going to be like a huge major swing back in another direction from where we were about a year ago or two even two months ago uh, But more or less just kind of uh, an indication as to what's going on with August uh, What we can kind of suspect for September and moving forward until we hit maybe about uh, Say usually about November we start to see a little bit of an uptick and then we see a little bit of a drop-off towards the end of the year start of the year then February uh, February, March, April, we start to see it pick back up again. Um, so let's talk about August real quick, because August is going to be kind of a key element here. Um, something that I do want to bring up is August's numbers look really good. Um, however, August numbers are slightly lower than they were in July. I'm going to explain why that is here in just a minute. Um, so August numbers... Uh, Total closed listings was 1907, up from 1872 in 2020. Our pending listings are 2174, up from 1937. Our new listings, uh, 2496, up from 2329. Um, that's a swing of about 150 no more listings, uh, right about there. Uh, sorry, about like 170 new listings. Uh, average sale, average list and average sales price were lower than they were in July, uh, down 244, 584. Average sales price 224, or sorry, 242, sorry, 244, 584 for the list price, 242, 851 for the sales price. If you kind of look at it from the same perspective, we'll just call it 240, 245, and 243. About $2,000 difference in between those. Um, Average percent of list price to sales uh, sales price to list price is 99.49, up from 98.21. Our average time on market 20.31, a little bit longer on market by about two days on average from July. And our month supply of inventory is uh, 37.23, which is down again 40 percent, 42 percent from last year at 50 uh, 65.17. And our month supply of inventory, 2.18, a little bit longer than it was at, in the July. Uh, not by much, uh, point, uh, point 0.16 more uh, month supply of inventory, uh, which realistically, that's just a couple of days. Um, so let's talk what's going on in the market. What are the differences? What concerns is there? What good signs are there? And what does this mean for you as a buyer, as a seller, as an investor, as somebody who's out looking? As well as we're going to cover some information from an article um, that we're going to have that I'm going to talk to you about a little bit more too. Um, I saved it here on my Facebook, so uh, it's going to be pretty interesting to see. Um, so let's start off with some information in regards to the data. I will try to put up some graphics. I will apologize if they don't come through. Um, 
I do want to kind of back up a lot of what I'm saying with actual details that might make sense to y'all. Um, so that way you can see a little more what's going on. So, let's talk the end of month inventory. Let's talk about the month supply of inventory. And that, that that number has come up since July. There's an additional about 300 homes. However, our numbers from July to August have also come up. Our pending listings have come up and our new listings have actually been down uh, compared to July. So, let's translate that. Let's talk a little more about what's going on there. One, the market obviously has ebbs and flows, highs and lows. Everything moves around the way it needs to. One of the things that we look that I'm looking at when I look at the market and the way things are going, A, at 2.18, we're still very much in a seller's market. Um, we're still at about a 50% rate from where we were last year in regards to what we have available in inventory. Um, houses are taking a little bit longer to sell. Our month supply of inventory is a little bit higher than it was, and that's thanks to we had a higher listing count, uh, new listing count come through in August versus July. Um, the average list price was a little bit lower. Let's be honest. July's numbers was around 250. August numbers around 244. However, when we look at the year-to-date numbers uh, compared to the July numbers, our year-to-date um, for 2021 average list price is 237.578. Average sales price at 235.036. Compared to July's year-to-date was 236 573 and 233 685 so our numbers have come up a little bit in terms of those averages which is good um we're still selling houses at a higher price uh this just means realistically the numbers are a little bit different it's been moving around uh buyers are having a little bit of an easier time getting the homes they want and they're sometimes getting a chance to negotiate a little bit on those how those homes just a little bit more. Um, our average time on market is up to 20 days versus 18 last month. Um, if you really want to break it down by neighborhood, I'll give you a great example. The neighborhood I live in, Turtle Creek at Midway, uh, in Broken Arrow, the average time on market for that neighborhood is about nine days compared to the general average over the area of uh, the Greater Tulsa Association of Realtors at 20, it's about a half of, about half the time of the average on market, which is great. Um, means things are just selling that quick. Um, but we want to take a look at some additional information. What do we know about how those percentages are looking? Compared to a couple of years ago, we're definitely at that 100%, 100% mark. Um, a vast majority of the homes between 225 and 425 are selling at or above. Um, when you take in those numbers, uh, that's that's about 65% of the market. 65% of the market is still selling at or above asking price. The ones that are selling below, if it's under 125, it's selling on average below asking price. If it's over 425, it is selling a little bit below list price. Um, but if you're in that sweet spot of 125 to 425, you're usually right on the money at the 100% mark. Um, so that's good to see. Um, sold price, if we start breaking it down, uh, the sales price, between them all, um, it looks pretty solid. I'll, yeah, I'm just going to kind of break it down. Um, a vast majority of our homes are in the 175 to 250 range. Uh, 470 of the pending homes or sold homes were in that price range. That's about a quarter of the market. Um, the average price point in that ballpark was at 212. Um, good portion of those homes that sold were in the three bedroom category as well too. So that's something to definitely take into consideration. Um, the prices, the average prices continue to jump higher and higher. Um, we're kind of starting to see what I expected in regards to uh, the market and how it was moving. Um, 2020, we saw kind of explosive growth um, versus uh, this year, we're still seeing the growth, but we're not seeing it 
um, at the rate that we did a year ago. Uh, one year ago, we were in pretty rough condition with, well, I wouldn't say rough, but we were uh, seeing our prices and our values increase by about 25%. Uh, right now, our year, one year, uh, about a 10% rise, uh, which isn't isn't bad. Um, that's actually a pretty good number to see at the end of the day. Um, it means we're still seeing some of the residuals from that. Um, however, as the market tends is tending to shift and kind of change a little more into um, starting to kind of swing back towards like a balanced market, we're going to start seeing that that, that for the uh, average numbers. So. Listings, closed listings are up, pending listings are up, new listings are up. However, time on market's a little bit longer and our must supply of inventory is a little bit longer. What's going on in August? School. Plain and simple, um, this is kind of a typical normal trend for Tulsa is we start to see kind of this weird change right about August going into, sep into September. Um, the numbers change a little bit just because school's starting um, we got stuff kind of starting to kick into gear there between school, uh, work, of course with COVID that's not making things any easier. A lot of kids, a lot of parents are a little nervous about trying to move their kids or even change schools or even have their house available for people to look at, uh, just cause they don't know. Is their, uh, is their kid's school going to get shut down? Are they going to be, uh, you know, work from home? Are they going to have to do school from home? Um, so there's a lot of little kind of moving parts in there as to what's going on with why there's a little bit of a lull in the market right now, why it's kind of shifting and changing a little bit. Um, I will be honest with you, if you're a buyer out there looking right now, is a great time to be uh, kind of getting into the ball game and looking a little more. Um, Buyers are having a bit of an easier time getting their offers accepted because there's not as much competition. There's also more homes on the market compared to where we were um, even a month ago. Uh, a year ago, if you really want to talk about the comparison side by side from last year, we're still down by about 43%. Um, that's not terrible though. Uh, we can definitely make that work. Um, so. What's some other news going on in, in the world of real estate? I found a very interesting article on CNBC. Uh, it was shared by a friend of mine. I think even my wife kind of sent it to me too. This was released on September 14th. Uh, the title, I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of link this down in the, uh, in the description as well so you can go to it, read this article yourself, kind of see what's going on. Um, America is short more than 5 million homes and builders cannot make up the difference. I cannot stress this enough. Um, the new construction world right now is, for a lack of better terms, hurting. Um, it's it's not a terrible situation for the new construction side, but the demand for homes, the lack of inventory, the lack of supplies, the lack of labor, has created a massive deficit in regards to our home, to homes, especially when it comes down to new construction, which kind of makes up a lot of the ground for the homes that are out there. Um, an older statistic that I kind of saw in here was a uh, key point very, at the very top, 12.3 uh, million, 12 .3 million <gasps> American households were formed from July 2012 to June 2021. However, 7 million new single-family homes were built during that period of time. Single-family home construction is running at its slowest pace since 1995. And yeah, uh, Plute Group lowers Q3 and full-year guidance for home closings, citing supply chain disruptions. Which 100% I can see that being the case. Uh, while lumber might be getting a little bit easier for people to get hold of and for builders to be able to do what they need to do, the flip side of that has been there's been delays with windows. Uh, windows are taking a while to be ordered and brought in, especially because of vinyl. Um, sometimes faucets, appliances. Uh, the chip shortage is having a massive effect in regards to um, appliances going into homes. Uh, sometimes 
buy, builders are having to um, eat the cost of an upgrade or charge a buyer a higher price because they had to upgrade the oven to something different. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts in that right now. Uh, new construction is trying to do the best they can to keep up with the demand. However, it's really hard to do that when a lot of the homes that are out there on the market right now, um, the, the lack of supply, the lack of inventory has created a large demand and they can't keep up with it because of supply chain issues. Um, so it's just, it's a very interesting time to kind of be in the new construction market. It's a very interesting time to be buying a house and be even considering the idea of new construction. Um, it's not a big problem. Uh, definitely means that, you know, if you're working on buying a home and maybe new construction is a great option for you, um, and look at to get a better idea of what might be available to you. Um, but at the end of the day, New home construction has been affected by supply chain issues, labor shortages. Um, you start talking about things that are going on in, in the world, uh, such as wildfires, delays in regards to things like vinyl being brought in from overseas, uh, chip shortages, all that jazz. It's, it's having an effect that's kind of rippling through. Um, drive by any dealership right now and look at what their new car inventory looks like. Um, I drove by a Toyota dealership today and their lot was pretty much empty, uh, aside from the used car side. So let that sink in. So what are my predictions? What do I expect to see happen throughout the rest of this year? Um, and going into next year too. When I start looking at the charts and kind of see kind of where things are at and what kind of happens right around this time of the year. Um, it seems like June, July, we tend to always kind of peak out a little bit more, and then we start to trail off until about December. Uh, our numbers will probably go down. Um, I think a lot of it comes down to a school's in session. I think there's a lot of uh, I think there's a lot of confidence issues with buyers um, and sellers with putting their house in the market during this period of time with school, with the unknown of. Will my kids get set home? Will I need to uh, do school from home? Will I need to work from home? Do I really want to go through all the headaches of trying to coordinate showings and people come through and looking at my house? Um, I can definitely see that being a small hurdle on that end and that definitely does have an effect in regards to what our numbers look like. Um, year to date, we're pretty much well over where we were last year. Um, about 1,600 more homes have sold so far year to date this year than we were than had sold at this point last year as well. So uh, that number right now, year to date, year to date sold listings, we're at 13,503 uh, for year to date in 2021. Year to date 2020, we were at 12,232, which is just slightly higher than 2019. And buyers are still out there; they're still buying. Sellers are still selling. We've, we've seen a little bit of an increase in the seller market, which is good to see. Uh, means that there's more homes starting to come onto the market. The month supply of inventory going up and the average time on market rising just a little bit compared to where it was in July's numbers is a good indication that um, buyers are having a better opportunity to get the homes that they want um, and maybe not having to compete nearly as much because there's more homes showing up. Uh, more options to pick from. Of course, at the same time, too, that's also including the fact that there's new home construction houses that come onto the market and people are buying those homes. Um, so, realistically, everything seems to be moving pretty well. The market is definitely looking up. Um, if I cannot get the, uh, if I could, if I wasn't able to get any of the uh, slides or details or any information, any graphics up here for you, um, I'm going to post the links to those below, or at least the link to get to the to the menu to find those. Um, that way you can go kind of look at the information. Obviously, I know we could probably cover like specific neighborhoods and really dig into that. Um, again, specific neighborhoods. Every neighborhood's completely different. Um, 
my neighborhood, uh, where I live, average price point, uh, price per square foot in the, on average in this area is about $133 a square foot. Um, houses in my neighborhood, on average, are on market for nine days before they sell. Um, so, just a lot to, you know, kind of unpack there and think about what's going on. Uh, and take into consideration what comes down to uh, where things are at in regards to our listings, um, in regards to the market. Um, it's still a good time to buy. It's still a great time to sell. I, I believe, looking at the numbers, I think the average prices, while we do see, compared to last month's numbers, we are down a little more. I also see that our average price point at the year to date is higher um, it is higher than it was last month. So the numbers will continue to rise, in my opinion. Um, I think it's just, there's going to be a lot of pent-up demand for homes here pretty soon. Um, if you're a buyer, the idea of I want to buy a house in Tulsa, um, we're looking at a pretty good time to start kind of dipping into the market a little bit and starting to get your get yourself out there. Um, we're no longer in a in a phase of seeing uh, quick days on market uh, below the 20 day mark. Um, right now we're at about 20 days on market uh, on average. Uh, the average price point obviously continues to kind of come up more and more compared to the year before. Uh, which is still a great thing to see. That means that the uh, the increase in our values have come up. Um, year to date, average sales price were up about 20%. When you start looking at the month to month detail, we're still up uh, about 11% there. So it's all looking really good. Um, I think what we're still looking at here right now is still the very bottom of the market. Um, I know a lot of people are saying, hey, there might be. I'm waiting for there to be a uh, a uh, crash in the market. Um, unfortunately, what I'm seeing right now and the numbers that I'm looking at overall um, indicate to me that a crash does not seem to be on the horizon. Um, the crazy part of it is... is when you look back at 2008 versus now, we have a lot more technology to our favor. Um, working from home is not an impossibility anymore for folks. Um, you can work from home. You can telecommute. A vast majority of people's businesses and companies have gone full-time uh, work from home. Um, so I don't think the layoffs were a big issue. Um, I know that they did happen. I know that some folks, their job just got laid off. They got laid off from their job and the economy, when the economy did what it went through. Um, but a vast majority of the business and the work that's out there, um, a lot of folks didn't lose their jobs because of that. Um, we do have, at the end of this month, the end of the uh, foreclosure moratorium. Um, that one, that one's a hard one to predict what's going to happen, to be honest with you. Um, it's always speculation as to what we expect. Some reports, some articles that I've read have said that if we go, if the moratorium gets lifted and all the homes that are in that, in that situation uh, were to hit the market at the same time, it would only increase our month's supply of inventory by about a half of a month. I uh, would add an extra 15 days onto the market. Um, we would have kind of a sudden influx of homes hit the market. However, I don't think the moratorium is going to affect the values and the prices of these homes. Because um, what's happened within the last year, thanks to the lack of inventory and the pent up demand from buyers, has resulted in a situation where houses that 
people aren't making their payments on that are in that you know pre foreclosure status or preparing to be foreclosed upon could very easily be listed um, and sell and maybe not have to face a short sale situation um, they could potentially break even they could potentially even walk away with some cash in hand depending on how long they've been in their house for and the condition of the home overall um, so I believe personally when the foreclosure market comes kind of back into gear again we might see a little bit of a lowering of the average price being sold however those homes that are going to fall into those categories are going to sell for a higher amount than they would have a year or two ago um, which means at the end of the day the bank's going to make more money people will lose their homes but they might actually if they can kind of sell their house before it all kind of hits be able to walk away with maybe some cash in their hand um, and save themselves in regards to their credit score again it's speculation I can't predict the future I can only look at the numbers and tell you what I believe is going to happen what has the potential to occur um, and that's what it basically comes down to at the end of the day uh, I can't predict what's going to happen next with the market. Um, I can tell you based on statistics for our market at this time, um, seeing the numbers that we're seeing, seeing that um, time on market's getting a little bit longer, the uh, month supply of inventory has kind of risen a little bit month over month. Um, frankly, I honestly believe that we're probably not going to run into much of an issue in regards to property values. Um, I think we're going to continue to see rises on that end. I think we will uh, sooner rather than later start to see um, more homes come to the market, uh, which will then feed into the buyer demand. Uh, a lot of folks will be selling a house in order to go buy another one. Um, so that's going to just build even more momentum. Uh, builders are having an easier time building houses. The time frames have been cut down. Uh, significantly thanks to the fact that now they can get through the framing and putting everything together basically building the skeleton of the house um, because lumber's gotten easier to obtain um, now we're just kind of in this holding pattern waiting for everything else such as plastics and vinyls and uh, computer chips and all this other stuff to kind of uh, correct itself as well. And once that kind of all settles in and corrects itself, um, I'm going to say that the new construction market's going to kind of start to boom. Uh, it might take a, a, another year or two before we start to see that happen, but if you're thinking about doing something like that, it's the time to do it. Um, I think what we're going to continue to see as property values go up is it's going to affect the values of the land. Um, builders are going to probably increase their prices um, they're gonna try to hold as steady as possible however every year builders continue to ri raise their prices because either something gets more expensive uh, be it the land and or the materials or the labor gets more expensive um, so uh, if you're in the market if you're thinking about selling um, please reach out let me know obviously we could use more listings um, we're still down by about 43, 50% from where we were a year ago. Um, houses are moving really quick. Uh, if you're buying a home, obviously now's a great time too. Uh, the market's only gonna continue to go up. Uh, so what you're looking at now, the prices, uh, the prices are gonna make a difference. Um, there's, some, there's some statistics that have flown out there kind of talking about different sides of it all. Um, rates are still pretty low uh, property values are coming up it's kind of a nice balance but if we do see maybe a minor crash and a dip in the market but then your interest rates come up um, it's not gonna make much of a difference at the end of the day it's gonna end up being a wash or it's gonna be more expensive um, so buying a house right now makes a lot of sense with low rates and seeing as I see us at the bottom of the market right now in regards to our price point um, I think it's just it's just good smart business to go ahead and say hey I'm gonna go ahead and buy this house now let the equity build if it does dip down a little bit it's okay I can sit in my house for five to seven years or longer 
and regain my equity as time moves forward. So, if you have any questions or anything I can do for you, if you've been thinking about selling, if you've been thinking about buying, if you're wanting to invest, I can help you with that. Um, I can do, I do kind of everything. I list, I help people with listings. Um, my average time on market over the last three years or so um, has been about three days on market. I've had some that do go longer. I've had a few that do go shorter. But my average time on market for the listings has been about three days on average. Uh, which when you start looking at the average for the market in general at 20 days, I'm well below what that is. Uh, if you're a buyer, it's starting to get a little bit easier, a little bit more simple to get out there, make the offers, lock down the house, get the contract and move forward. Um, whether you're an FHA, conventional, VA buyer, um, 184 uh, if you're doing the Native American loans. Um, all of these different programs are starting to kind of kick into gear, starting to get a little bit easier. If you're a buyer, it's getting a little bit less stressful to buy a home. So if you've been thinking about it, let me know. I'm here to help. And I uh, hope this gave you a lot of good information, a lot of good details to think about when it comes down to buying a home. Obviously, if there's anything you can do for you, feel free to reach out. I'm always here to help. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.